this was more than disturbing. Imagine you have been shot. You knock on somebody's door. They call 911 and you still bleed out for over an hour and die. That's exactly what happened. Let's put up the picture of this young woman who should be alive right now. A Michigan mother has filed a lawsuit against the Saginaw County Central Dispatch and one of its supervisors, alleging they were in fact negligent and thereby contributed to the death of her daughter. Daughter was shot. Let me give you a little background. On the morning of July 5th, 2021, police found 20-year-old in Allah Wallace suffering from several wounds on a porch on the 1800 block of Burnham Street. Okay. What did she do? She knocked on the door. After knocking on the door of the burn of, of the Burnham home, a man opened fire and shot her five times. As Inala wailed out loudly, the gunman fled the scene. She got to a neighboring house and banged on the door, hoping someone would hear her. One woman did. One woman heard her. Called the police, called 911. 911, we need help. County Central Dispatch Supervisor Logan Bissell was the one that took the call. Put up Logan. Took the call. All right. Not only a dispatcher, supervisor took the call. So this person received a call, a 911 emergency call, about the shooting at 426 in the morning. The caller was a female resident living next to the house where Inala was shot. The woman told the dispatcher she heard the gunshots and reported Inala was pounding on her door asking for assistance. The supervisor asked the woman three times if she was certain that Inala had been shot and then told her police were on the way. This was untrue, according to the complaint. At the time, no officers, none, were en route to the residence. According to the lawsuit, three other women were also shot around the same time as Inala, but because Bissell erroneously coded the call as shots fired. The young lady was not tended to quickly. The code did not prioritize the shooting and did not suggest to the other dispatchers, police or emergency responders that the young woman had been shot. This dispatcher supervisor failed to use the proper code to express the urgency of the call. Allegedly, dispatch and the police department have an off the record understanding of victimless crimes and treat them as low priority. That's off the books. It's not in the policy, but it's in the culture. Okay. The complaint states Bissell knew this, and by the circumstance of his actions, that person, the supervisor, is in fact responsible for the delayed emergency response to the young lady. I completely concur. Now, I want to remind everyone, it does not require mans rea, meaning formulation of a criminal thought. It does not require you to be malicious or intentional, but you can be grossly negligent, and it is in fact criminal, it led to the death of this young lady. The negligence of this supervisor led to the death of another human being. Think about her suffering. She bled out for over an hour after being assured 911 had been contacted and nobody came to help her. Over an hour, 5.50 a.m. 5.50 a.m., the original caller called 911 again. I just called in an hour ago. That's what she said. And said there were shots fired outside of my house and there was a girl pounding on my door. No cops have showed up. And I just looked out of my door and she is laying on my porch. Where the F are these cops? 
after this call, medical providers were actually sent. They were actually sent after the second call, which means what? They would not have been sent at all if the second call was not made. The lawsuit says by 5.58 a.m. The young woman was in full arrest and medical professionals pronounced her dead at 6.05 a.m. because only one of her five wounds was life-threatening. Experts suggest she likely would have survived had she received medical attention sooner. Monday, August 29th, this case against the 911 dispatch was brought forward. Attorneys J. Victor J. Mastromarco and Kevin J. Kelly filed the suit on behalf of Ms. Wallace and the County Circuit Court against the County Central Dispatch and Supervisor Logan Bissell with one count of gross negligence and liability, according to MLive.com. In addition to this, the man who shot Inala was arrested and charged. The man's name, Ramiro Garcia, 39, has been identified and charged on the single counts of open murder and felony firearm for the murder of Ms. Wallace. Open murder contains both first and second degree murder charges. If convicted, he faces life for both offenses, though a second degree conviction may allow for a parole possibility. <laughs> Massive failures here. But where does it stem from? Don't miss this part. It stems from a culture that's adversarial to the policy. They decided to go against their own protocol and create a culture that categorized shootings. Nothing in writing. They just decided, here's how we're going to handle it just between us. And because of that culture, that culture led to the death of a human being. Now, remember, I say often, culture eats policy alive every day of the week. And that's what you see here. But this time, that culture led to the death of an innocent victim of a crime. That's why it's important to stop thinking just reform and start thinking replacement. Some of these cats got to go. They're rotten to the core. It's no helping them. We need a new system. Dan, thoughts here? And, you know, this is a terrible story. I hope people are actually understanding as well that this is far from the first time this has happened. Right. I remember a recurring joke from the boondocks where every time Riley would call 911, they'd go, 911 emergency? Yeah, I'll hold. And so it's like yep. a, we know that it takes 911 a long time, especially to come to certain communities and provide medical services that are necessary. Sometimes it's because of that implicit thing, like you said, the victimless crimes, they'll rather deploy resources elsewhere. Other times it's because, yeah, they really just devalue the life of certain neighborhoods as compared to other ones and what they'll police sort of implicitly. You can't even say that it was the supervisor being new on the job because they know what classifying those uh, calls based on be like those different categories, what that actually means as far as what response people get. So yeah. um, I hope justice really served here. I think it was a massive mistake by the dispatchers, whether they knew it or not. Yep. All right. 